I think you will agree that we've had a terrific start to IMARC and this discussion with Mark is really a terrific way to kick off the CTO leadership session. Not only do we have Mark here, but IBM is a sponsor of the session and we thank them very much for that. Now, I'm based here in Sydney and Mark is on the East Coast of the United States. So not only is this a trans-Pacific interview, but it's a trans-continental interview as well. Welcome, Mark. It's great that you can join us, and I'd like to start with the first question for you. As the leader of IBM's technology and business services organizations, I imagine you are meeting regularly with C-suite officers in all industries all the time. Broadly speaking, what are the significant trends you are seeing, and how have things with the pandemic changed that? Yes, Chris, uh, certainly one of the things that I'm uh, finding in, in my many conversations with C-suite executives uh, around the world, most of which, are, of course, are taking place virtually today, is that there has been a significant acceleration in the digital transformation that their organisations are going under, compelled to, to be such a way but simply because of the need to connect with customers in these virtual times, uh, to allow employees to do their work in this new world. And that's led to the adoption of, of a lot of technology inside organisations, the acceleration of its use uh, across, across those uh, companies. We've also, though, seen that the, the transformation um, agenda for, uh, for our clients has been very much focused around the extent to which their organisation has the skills to now leverage these tools and the, the new ways of working that are emerging from the crisis is absolutely also becoming a real area of focus. And perhaps most interestingly is that this, this moment has compelled most ex chief executives to really think hard about the future direction of their organizations and the strategic imperatives they want to follow. And if anything right now, several are actually still working their way through almost a, a proliferation of strategic options and so that the truth is they've got to try and work out which one to follow. Should I focus on market making transformation or should I be focusing on internal operational flexibility to make me as well prepared as I can be for a, a post-COVID world? Yes, it certainly has been a time to sit back and reflect on the strategic direction of companies. So uh, shifting from a broader industry focus to mining, IBM has a significant presence in mining and how is this playing out to impact imperatives in our industry? Well, I think the mining industry actually has, has not been immune from the things that I was talking about before. And certainly it's an industry that has certainly started to look at itself in a very, very different way with the, the massive application of the potential of technology. I mean, every organization, every mining organization is actually thinking about itself more and more as a technology company. Uh, they're thinking about the, the business platforms they want to build, the platform uh, company they want to be. And, and many of them are thinking about also what it means in terms of the experience uh, they want to deliver as well, as they play their part in wider society and the communities that they serve. So I think that all of that is actually establishing you know, a very, very different agenda for the mining industry. Uh, we're seeing you know, the potential for new ecosystems to emerge which uh, connect you know, mining, mining organizations with other players in related uh, industries. We're seeing a real focus on the application of technology to transform critical workflows like the supply chain, like the customer service process, like uh, mining operations in a very different way. And we're certainly seeing the, the need for the mining um, organizations to think hard about their skill sets and their organization operating models to prepare them to be ready to play this, this more expansive and modern role. So there are a lot of challenges there for the mining industry. And from IBM's point of view, how do you address those challenges holistically? Well, I think our, our point of view is that it is actually very important to first of all, you know, have a very clear sense of the North Star for your organization. It's very important that you're very clear about where your focus is going to be in terms of the business platforms that you want to compete upon. Uh, and that's a very important starting point. Uh, and in many cases, that may involve you know, reinventing the boundaries of your organization uh, to think about you know, how it might, might be thought of in a different way. 
Secondly, I think, is then about taking the, the critical processes or the workflows that underpin uh, that picture of your organisation and looking at how technology can actually transform those workflows in a very, very substantial way for competitive advantage. And we, we've seen examples you know, of mining companies, for example, that have, that have taken their entire uh, mining value chain have implemented you know, IoT at massive scale for sensing what's going on along that value chain, have applied AI and automation again substantively across that picture, are thinking about how they can use blockchain to uh, uh, provide certainty as to the sourcing uh, of, of various raw materials in that mining flow. And all of that comes together to create a completely different uh, view of the way your entire mining operations take place. Uh, and then I think that having got that picture clear about the, the transformation that's taking place to your workflows is to then think about what does that mean for the pools of skills that I have in my organisation? Where has a skill set that I used to require no longer required because automation or AI or, or some other uh, technology has, has removed the need for it? But where have I found now that with the data that I've got and the information that I have to hand, that the skills I have now can now be uplifted um, and, and new areas of insight brought to the business in that way. So that the ability to, to, to do all of that, we find, is, is absolutely the heart of that path. It also, of course, does involve the, the underpinning change to the use of, of, of technology solutions uh, and the applications and the infrastructure of our, of our mining organisations the move towards more cloud-based technologies, which will allow us to have these kind of flexible workflows with all the technologies in play running across them and the hybrid cloud world and how you manage that as a transformation from historic uh, underlying systems, we think is a really important way of, of eating the elephant. Can you discuss some more about the trends of co-creation and open ecosystems? Why are they taking on increased importance? Well, I think that the, the, the speed of change and the degree of change that organisations are facing mean it's actually very difficult to imagine going on this journey alone or relying entirely upon what you have inside your organisation to understand and, and adapt to that change. So what we, what we very much see, therefore, is organisations stretching the boundaries, becoming more open organisations, seeking innovation from business partners, in a different way uh, and creating new new ventures that actually you know and allow organizations to, to straddle that that view so i think very much we think that this this area of of, of ecosystem um, expansion certainly means you start drawing on other parties to allow change to happen if you're going to allow that to happen though you need an environment where co-creation can take place and that's where we have seen the use of something we call our garage methodology which is a methodology that brings together ecosystem partners together with ourselves to bring the application of technology to transform a particular workflow, to actually co-create where the value pools are that we can go after, to think about how uh, proofs of concept can be scaled up such that we can start to see the, the big change occurring. All of that's and the transfer of skills and knowledge as well, because we're finding that many of our clients are now looking not simply for us to bring skills to bear in our work with them, but to uplift their skills so that their own personnel and people emerge as more technology savvy and able to leverage these tools themselves. What are some of the lessons learned, Mark, that leaders should be thinking about as they guide their organization through these transformational changes? I think that some of the lessons learned are really around uh, focus is a very important lesson. I, I think that we, 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 we do see organizations that are almost trying to do too many things and particularly you know, with the, the proliferation of potential things to work on in the current environment, I think we have to recognise that's something uh, that has to be looked at hard. I think we have to also, you know, also frankly in this current environment, be thoughtful about the, the, the change management and what the change in leadership style is to actually execute change right now. Clearly, of course, you know, many, many, many of the players in the mining industry are, of course, very much tied to the site and, and have a very natural you know, site and location based activity. But also a lot of leadership is now having to take place virtually as well. And how we now join the dots between more virtual leadership models with that face to face uh, supervision of activity uh, is, is, I think, a, a, big, a big lesson uh, in, in, in to think about. I'd also say that you know, that change management process is involving you know, 
a much more nuanced ability to understand all the moving parts of a change. Uh, and we're finding, again, organisations seeking out what I call control tower approaches to managing all of that diverse change in their organisations. Many organisations in this industry have embraced Agile and, and, and the use of, of Agile squads and approaches, which is a very powerful idea. But we've also seen lessons learned from that, creating almost a proliferation of, of micro change, which is a bit like Brownian motion without actually having you know, the, the purpose and the direction and intent, which allows you to achieve the objectives. So these are a few of the lessons we, we're, we're learning at this time. So Mark, you talk a lot about skills, you talk a lot about change and transformation, uh, needing to have a focus, and uh, of course that's related to technology. Do you think our industry has the skills we need for the future? And if not, how do we build on those skills and particularly attract young people to our industry? There absolutely is an imperative around, around, around the skills agenda. Uh, and I think that as we, as we think about some of the lessons learned, actually some of the interesting things are, it's a balance between how do we build new skills, but also how do we retain some of the old skills that maybe are now being lost through people leaving the industry. Some of the most interesting work we've done with, with players such as Woodside, for example, have been about how do those people who work in their installations who are retiring, how do they pass on their knowledge of, to, to the next generation coming through? So there are things that we have to think about about holding on to legacy insights. And we also believe very strongly that, that organizations in this industry will still be relying very strongly on their core expertise moving forward. But you've also got to imagine the new skills that have got to be created, the, the data and analytics skills that have got to be applied, the ability to understand the power of these new tools that are now available, to understand technology as technology becomes so much more about what the business is about, um, and, and different kinds of technologies which are fast moving. So all of this, I think, raises the, raises the bar in terms of, uh, of the skills agenda. And it means that you know, all organisations, but including ones in this industry, have to almost look at every you know, major pool of skills they've got and think about what is the transformation journey of skills I've got to go on here? How many of the people here are capable of being reskilled to, to the new areas? And then also, of course, you know, the, the point you, you raise around in terms of how do we attract a new talent to this industry? First of all, the more that it modernizes, the more technology enabled that it becomes, the more exciting it will be as a place for, for, for younger people to, to come and uh, build their careers. And I think that's very much an important part of, of how this industry projects itself uh, move, move, moving forward. And then I think there's important areas such as uh, the focus on sustainability and, and big themes like uh, the, the broader stakeholder um, value creation, which are going to be very important to the younger generation about, about building a career in this space. And so the more that um, you know, the players in the mining industry are able to uh, set their agenda in a strong way that is supporting sustainability, that I think will also be a, a big area of focus. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. We're having a lot of discussions here in Australia about skills and certainly how to attract younger people to our industry. So we're just touching on that area of, of value and delivering stakeholder value. I've seen your Mining Anywhere summary, which really encapsulates how you deliver stakeholder value. And you pose a question in that document, really articulated as a problem statement, which is, how can miners build capability to enable improved outcomes for stakeholders, both economic and socially? Well, I think, first of all, I, I do think it's at the heart of uh, of the future of, the, of this particular industry, that, that, that there is an ability to actually position uh, the mining industry in a way that does obviously uh, join the dots and bridge the gap between the, the importance of this industry and also the perception of, of the value that it creates more broadly uh, in the communities and the society that it operates in. I think that that, is, that does involve uh, some, some very, very real um, uh, thinking through of the, of, of the projection of the industry in terms of its focus on important societal themes, but it also talks to the, the importance of joining the dots for the industry about the vital role that it plays in the end-to-end -end value chains in the world right now, and how much of what it is that we take for granted and indeed need to develop our societies around the world is still born out of the raw materials and the, and the components that come from 
from this, this industry and its activities. So there's, I think, a joining of the dots to be made more clearly between the essential nature of the mining industry as an underpinning of, of the lifestyles and the de economic development around the world. There's more that can then be done about where the, the mining industry touches communities specifically about the, the role it plays in the economic development of those communities and the importance it plays as a fundamental driver of livelihoods. And I think finally, as I say, the piece that, that builds upon a sense that this is being done with an eye to sustainability around the planet, around uh, uh, nature and, and the broader environment we operate in, and a sense that, we, that the industry understands its connectivity to that world and is, and is thinking about how to go about its business in a way that um, still delivers on the objectives, but recognizes that imperative. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for spending time with us today. Really appreciate your insights. And we look forward to hearing more from IBM during iMark in terms of what you're doing uh, with your clients and how you're leading the way in this area. Thank you. Thanks very much. A pleasure to join you. Cheers.